Well, welcome to See Here Love. I'm your host, Melinda Estabrooks. I'm joined by my wonderful co-host, Anne Miranda. Hi, Anne. Hi, Mel. How's it going? It's good. Can you believe, Anne, that this is our fourth stop on our coast-to-coast -coast conversations across Canada, and we are in majestic Manitoba? I love it. I love this so much. I love meeting the people across this country, leaning into the stories. I just, I can't believe this whole experience. It's been amazing. It's amazing. And hearing the stories of women that some are so different from each province to province, but then some are really the same, which says a lot, right? That even though we're in different provinces uh, and different geography, that we have the same experiences and the same emotions too, which has been really amazing to hear. Yeah, we so, are connected. Yay! <laughs> today. Obviously, you can we're see we're celebrating not America. only being in Manitoba, but we are also celebrating Canada Day, Canada's 153rd birthday today. So happy Canada Day to you, and Anne, happy Canada Day. What do you love most about Canada? Man, I, I totally do love the diverse landscape. Um, I love the people. I know like our families, my families came to Canada knowing it's a nation of hope. I love the opportunities that I've had with work and church and community and relationships. It's just been, uh, you know, just an amazing place to grow up. So I'm born and raised in Canada. I love like everything from coast to coast. There's so much to explore that I still haven't seen. I know it's an amazing, I would say the same thing. I think for me, I love uh, how vast it is, how diverse in landscape, geography and people. But I also just love how Canada has just afforded me so many opportunities as a young Filipino uh, girl coming into Canada in the mid eighties and how I, the opportunities from church community and people uh, that I've received. And I'm so, so thankful. So I just love this great country. Well, and we have a great show today as we listen to stories of four amazing women living in Manitoba and their thoughts on faith, which is a, one of See Here Love's core values, and how to truly and deeply love our neighbors in word and action. So I'm so excited to hear from them. Yeah, we want to hear who you are, where you live, tell something unique about Manitoba that you love. Uh, Kareen, why don't we start with you? Uh, you can let us know a little bit about you and what you love about Manitoba. Well, hi everybody. My name is Karen and I am from Ivory Coast and came to Manitoba 12 years ago. I love the fact that uh, there is a strong Francophone community and I actually went to a French university. Um, I graduated and I was able to have francophone jobs opportunities as well. So this is something that some people don't know because they think French only Quebec, but yes, if you speak French, you are welcome to Manitoba. And I live in Winnipeg. You live in Winnipeg. Uh, yes. So who are you? Um, I know that you are an artist, but maybe just talk a little bit about that. Yes, yeah, so I am a songwriter and a worship leader um, in, a, in a church here in Manitoba. And uh, I began songwriting pretty early in my life because I was, I, I gave my life to Christ when I was 13. So I was writing song in French when I was in Ivory Coast. And when I came here, I just learned and I appreciated so much of the culture and I just grew to become also an Anglophone um, songwriter. And I've released three singles that are doing pretty good. So mm -hmm. it's been an, an exciting journey for me. It's great. Wonderful. Roberta, what about you? Tell us a little bit about who you are and what you love about Manitoba. Uh, yeah, my husband and I are both actually not from Winnipeg. We're from Edmonton and we moved here five years ago. And we're church planting in September and we're also having our first baby in September. So. <laughs> Birthday, all around, birthing. Okay. <laughs> it's a big month for us. Um, and something I love about Winnipeg, it's such an um, artsy city. When you come here, you wouldn't think it, but there's so many local coffee shops, local restaurants, local music. And that's just something I love. Like there's always somewhere new to go that's local. So yeah. And Sharon, what about you? Tell us a bit about yourself. I have, uh, I've been married to my husband, Jerry, for 32 years, and we have four sons. Uh, all in their 20s and two of them are married and so I have two daughter-in-laws and as Roberta said earlier I'll have my third daughter-in-law this summer so I'm pretty excited about that and I have two grandchildren a little boy and a little girl and so I spend quite a bit of time with them 
Um, I'm a school teacher, actually. Uh, I'm a music elementary school teacher, and I teach piano lessons also. So I've been doing that for a really long time. Um, I love Winnipeg. I, I'm a therapist also. Maybe I'll tell you a little bit more about myself. I'm a therapist at my church called Soul Sanctuary, and I'm also um, working at the University of Winnipeg uh, while I'm finishing off my master's degree. And so I love Winnipeg because it has four distinct seasons. And I know that's crazy to some people, but I have lived on the West Coast and I love the West Coast. But I have to say, coming back to Winnipeg, I love the change of the seasons and I even love the winter, believe it or not. You know, we have cottage country in the summer, but in the winter, it's beautiful too. Yeah. Wow, Lorraine, we want to hear from you. Tell us a little bit about yourself and why you love Manitoba. I am a wife and a mom. I'm a grandmother of three beautiful grandsons and possibly a fourth one in the next day or two. We're very excited about a fourth grandson. I'm also a school principal. I have the privilege of leading a kindergarten to grade five school. And I live, I live in, I work in Winnipeg. I live just outside the city um, in a little community called Oak Bluff. I love serving. I love leading. I love walking with people who are dealing with hard things. Um, in particular, to walk with people that are uh, dealing with grief. And I like to serve in whatever capacity God calls me to serve in. And that's really where my heart is um, when it comes to leading others. And things I like about Winnipeg, I think that's what I'm supposed to say next. Um, I love the bright blue prairie skies, even on the coldest days of winter. I love the changing seasons and the long days of summer. Our, our days now go like to almost 10 o'clock at night. And it's so beautiful. I also appreciate the way Winnipeg celebrates and embraces cultural diversity. Um, this city is unreal that way. And I enjoy the quality of theater and concerts in this city. There are so many opportunities that we all get to, um, we have to choose, pick and choose. And even though Winnipeg gets a bad rap sometimes, because it really does, it is a really awesome city and a fabulous place to live, even in the winter. And mosquitoes are not what people say they are. Um, in fact, there's hardly any because we have dragonflies and the dragonflies <laughs> eat all the mosquitoes. So it's a pretty sweet place uh, to live. I'm, I'm grateful that I'm here. I've lived here twice, came back to Winnipeg twice. Most people don't do that. That's amazing. Well, you know what? I'm, I'm really excited that we are celebrating Canada Day in Manitoba. And so what better way for me and for our viewers and listeners to know more about Manitoba and for you, Kareen, Roberta, Sharon, and Lorraine, because I'm going to start with some Manitoba trivia. And I'm going to put it out there and whoever raises their hand first, answer, but let's see how well you know your province. Okay, here we go. First question for our Manitoba trivia. It's nicknamed the polar bear capital of the world and one of the best places in the world to see the Northern Lights. What city called? I want to say Churchill. 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 Yes, woo! Maybe, maybe. Churchill, Churchill. That's amazing. Okay, um, second question. Manitoba has more blank than Ontario and Quebec combined, and it is often referred to as the blank capital of the world. It is known as more than blank than Ontario and Quebec combined, and it's also referred to as the blank capital of the world. Sharon. Well, I don't know if this is right, but we do have a lot of bison. We're known for bison. I don't know. That's close-ish, because I know that you do have a lot of bison, but it is, if you no one else knows, curling clubs. Oh, yes. You have more curling clubs than Ontario and Quebec combined, and you actually are referred to the curling club capital of the world. Oh, what's, what do you say when you like push the broom thing, the stone, you go, hey, yo, yeah, something like that. I like when they kind of like, none of you curl. <laughs> oh, no, there it is. You say swipe. Swipe. Okay, you guys should know that. You're the curling capital of the world, so it's swipe. Okay. Amazing. Okay. Here's another one. The inspiration for James Bond was this famous World War, uh, uh, World WW2. Why can't I say that? World War II spy master who happened to be born and raised in Winnipeg. What was this man's name? He was the inspiration for James Bond. 
Anybody know? Did you even know that? That James Bond was inspired by somebody from Winnipeg? Okay, no? Okay, here's the answer. Sir William Stevenson. So Sir William Stevenson, who was raised in Winnipeg, was actually the uh, inspiration for James Bond. Okay, next, maybe this is an easier one. What famous bear was named after the city of Winnipeg? Oh, everybody did that. Okay, well, everybody who, okay, say it, say it, say it, go for it. Winnie the Pooh. Yes, Winnie <laughs> the Pooh. <laughs> I had no idea that actually a bear, there was a real bear named Winnie, Winnipeg, that was then the creation with Christopher Robin. I had no idea, so that was amazing. Um, okay, I have one more. And do you want to go into the next ones? Yeah, I got a cool one. Um, it's the world's largest, longest running multicultural festival featuring over 44 cultural pavilions. What is it called, Lorraine? Folklorama. Yay! <laughs> I did the best. Longest. What in the world? <laughs> Incredible. Amazing. Okay, this is uh, incredible, incredible um, trivia. It's the first national museum to be built outside of Canada's capital region and the first museum of its kind in the world. Okay, Lorraine. <laughs> it's like museum Jeffrey. of Human Rights. That yes. is correct. Yes. Okay, that, and this is amazing. Like, Manitoba has the first museum of its kind in the world the Canadian Museum for Human Rights in the world is in Manitoba. You guys, like you're way ahead of things. And I'm so like, honestly, like really impressed with that. And it's like, the mandate is to explore the subject of human rights in order to enhance the public's understanding of human rights to promote respect for others and to encourage reflection and dialogue. It so speaks to you guys. Anyway, that's exciting. Oh, right. you're gonna love this one. There is a garden that is devoted to world peace along the world's longest unfortified border. It lies between US and Canada, between Manitoba and North Dakota. It's a symbol of friendship between our two countries. Anybody know what that one's called? Lorraine for the triple? <laughs> What's it it's called, called, Lorraine? It's called the Peace Gardens. Yeah, yeah International <laughs> Peace Garden. Peace Garden, again, <laughs> who knew? <laughs> exactly. Mel, this is like a creative center, actually. Oh, what totally. the Manitoba it is. itself is a birthplace of so many creatives. It's this creative space uh, that it's incredible, almost like an unsung hero in many ways. There are so many artists, singers, oh. like Neil Young. Um, Do you know Neil Young? Neil Young is one of yours. Didn't know that oh. either. And tons of actors. Tons of it's it's really really incredible of uh, what actors worship leaders singers um olympians yeah. i can't believe how many olympians you have coming out of manitoba i like just reading about your province is so incredible so i, I know i'm just gushing because ann and i were like the, every time we'd read about manitoba we were just like amazed so you guys live in such a special province a really really special wonderful rich province so so glad that uh, we could be here too together well i want to kind of like transition We've had some fun about you know our trivia and what we love and as we celebrate canada day and at see her love we love listening to stories of faith and how your faith in jesus informs your life your decisions your choices and how you love your neighbor and I know that all of you, Kareen, Roberta, Sharon, and Lorraine, have a lot to say um, on that. And it's so timely right now about loving our neighbor. As you are artists and songwriters and pastors and educators and therapists, we need to hear your voice and your story. So we want to open it up now to your story on, on your faith and loving your neighbor. And I want to start with Kareen and Roberta um, in the beginning part of the show, take a break, and then we're going to hear from Lorraine and Sharon. But Kareen, I want to start with you. Korean Bedo, you're a bilingual Christian artist and songwriter. You mentioned you're originally from the Ivory Coast. You yeah. are a black woman residing in Winnipeg. And I want to know just your thoughts on what is currently happening in Canada and the U.S. Mm -hmm. The anti-racism protests, ending systemic racism, the conversations. How are you feeling as a woman right now? Yeah, like I can definitely say that this is heartbreaking to see what is happening in the US and to see how 
racism is experienced in the US, in Canada, or in many other countries in the world. Um, but I'm also joyful that there are so many good resolutions that were able to, to come to life out of this. And I am so grateful to see that people are open to conversations. And this is a big deal because we have to understand what, what, what racism is. And that conception of being so closed off is now broken and people can speak out and be heard. And I think for me, this is a, a move toward real freedom because we live together, but if we cannot be free and be validated and feel equal, then there's definitely something that is just breaking down relationship. We can never be uh, real with each other. And as a Christian, for me, Christ came to be an example and he was someone who was about justice, calling people, just, just giving his hand to people that were calling out for help. And that's what is so important for us as Christian or um, as people of different color, white or different race. So important to just understand that Christ is the real model. And it doesn't matter, you know, the different opinions that we have. If we call ourselves believers, Christ-like, then we have to be acting like Christ, who is someone who was reachable and standing up for because he loves, because he loved us. And this is definitely how I see life. And uh, my intake of the situation is just to keep loving and reaching out to people that are hurt. And Corinne, what would you say? Because it's easy to love those that love us and love those who are like us. Mm -hmm. How do you love when they're not like us or they don't love us? What has been your experience in in the example of Jesus is not just loving those that are like us, but loving our enemy? loving those that are hard and and hurt us what would you say to those people who are asking that question i'll say that you know just be open at least um go to the encounter of the other because most of the things we feel are based on assumptions and presumptions and these are lies that uh, we grew up maybe hearing i don't know the media or the environment we grew up were not necessarily diverse and we have those conception of the other person. And for me, you have to go to the encounter. For me, I always give the, the benefits of the doubt um, to someone. I always try to, to see people for who they are, like human. Mm -hmm. And I also call myself a citizen of earth. Like everybody who knows me knows that I refer myself as a citizen of earth, meaning that the world belongs to everybody. And you always have to make, you know, extend, always try to extend, give other people the chance um, to express, and then you can, you know, grow and learn. And uh, there's nothing to lose. For me, there's nothing to lose. And finally, just your own personal faith in Jesus mm -hmm. in a very practical way for people to say, I, I love that, Kareen. I get that. I, I want to live that way. I want to be that you know, citizen of the world. I want to give people the benefit of the doubt. But in your own personal faith of Jesus and knowing him, you know, what has really helped you uh, love your neighbor, you know, and, and really in this time, this very uh, contentious time that we're seeing, be able to live in peace and in joy and in hope? Yes, I will say that my faith is, is, is shown in every areas of my life. I'm not just a Christian at church. You know, I am a Christian at work. I am a Christian in my family. I am a Christian in my social environment. I am a Christian in my community. And for me, uh, it's the same face that I'm showing. Sometimes we feel as if um, we are a different person at church and then we have to be a different person at work. But there's one song that I've written this year that just said, lead me. And that's really my spirit in everything that I do. I always pray for leadership, just asking God, okay, how do you want me to behave? Where are you calling me? Help me see why, why you, what you're seeing. Help me be that person in every area of my life. Just lead me. And I know that you are leading me to green pasture. I have this assurance that the road that I'm following, as long as it's God's will, it's God's road, I will never be disappointed. And this is a truth that I believe in. It's helping me opening up. It's helping me coming out of my comfort zone, 
because I know that God is leading me and I can rest. I feel restful when I let God just lead me. I, I just feel myself. And this is how I've been able to manifest my faith, just knowing that God is leading me and uh, believing that he has good plans for me and for for people, for, for his creation. Beautiful. Karina, I just want to affirm to you that as women of different backgrounds and diversity, we are with you and we stand with you. Thank you. And just to affirm that the beauty of of God and his creation and creating all of mm. us different is is his love for us, is the beauty of, of diversity, of learning, mm. of listening, amplifying voices that we need to hear, educating ourselves. Yeah. So I just want to let you know that we, you know, um, we stand with you and we are with you. And so thank you for uh, your courage and, and just the beauty in which you speak uh, the truth of how Jesus lives truly and deeply real within your life. So thank you. Thank you for having me. I love that. Gorgeous. This is just a gorgeous conversation already. Uh, beautiful. Karina, it, that, that uh, citizen of earth could be a song title. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'd listen to that song. Um, Roberta, as a pastor, you know, you're doing this church plant. Where, how does Jesus inform uh, you to truly love your neighbor and then teach others to do the same? Uh, you know, you're, you're living out justice, you're living out love and peace and teaching others to do the same. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, I think that's a great question. I feel for me right now, I just want to listen as a white woman. I want to listen to the stories, but I don't want to leave it there. I also want to step out and use my voice. Mm -hmm. So I think there's two parts to it. Um, I love the story of the woman at the well with Jesus, how he comes to her. And she even says to him, right, what is a Jewish man doing talking to a woman and a Samaritan? And she like asked him, like, what are you doing this? But he didn't care of the outward appearance, right? He was able to break the boundaries of you know, gender and of race right there. And he just loved her. He said what she needed to hear in that moment. And I think something for loving our neighbors, when I think of people on our launch team, and I just think of people in my life, I want them to know how crazy God is about them because that's going to move them to change. Like shame, condemnation, you know, all of those things don't help us, especially with what's going on right now. I want to hear stories. I want to love. I want to affirm that God has called you, that God has made you the way he wanted to make you. Um, so I think that's something right now that I'm super convicted of is listening and stepping into that. And yeah. Wow. There's a lot of enthusiasm there. I love that, Roberta. I think that kind of enthusiasm and conviction mm -hmm. of listening is really key for not only, you know, every generation, but I think even for a younger generation mm -hmm. that the listening posture is where we're going to learn the most. Totally. And I think for my husband and I, my husband and his brother have different fathers and his brother is black and he's white. And I think for us, like seeing his brother's experience has really caused us to feel like an urgency on this issue and has caused us to want to speak. Um, not obviously having the personal, the same as his brother would, but just wanting to speak on this and not be silent right now. I think the church more than ever needs to be vocal about these issues. The church needs to be the hope because like we can be hope if people are listening. And so, yeah, that's kind of where that comes from. <laughs> mm, it's good. Uh, as far as the church, I think I just want to ask you this before we go to break, Roberta, but as the church, I think what a time to be a very significant voice into justice, into equality, mm -hmm. into love of all people and into listening. How are you ensuring that? Like how, I, I think it's, it's, I'm kind of like maybe putting all the church on you and I don't mean to do that, okay. but I'm saying the okay. church is getting a bad rap for not you know, being relevant or being that. And so it encourages me to hear that you're committed to that. So maybe just encourage us that the church is doing something that mm -hmm. its heart is breaking, you know, in a time like this. Yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, when I think for this whole year, when COVID-19 hit, we're like, why are we planting a church now? <laughs> like, this is crazy that this is happening. And then with what's happening now, we're like, no, this is the perfect time. And I think for our launch team, what we're seeing is young seeing a lot of young people, a lot of young black girls and, and indigenous people on our team who are hearing from their pastors that they're heard and they're seen. We're willing to post on social media, Black Lives Matter. We don't wanna make that controversial. We're not making that political. We're just saying, hey, we care about you. So I think right now for the church, like we're just willing to stand and like say, hey, we're with you. We're there for you. Um, I even just think of a young girl, she was so excited for the protest and she's messaging me her, you know, okay. 
what do you think of my sign? I'm like, that's so beautiful that you're able to go and you're able to do that. And, and she wanted to know Mark and I were going to be there, you know, standing with her. I didn't go because I'm pregnant and there was lots of people there, but you know, I think having Mark go there and just being a voice for the church in that way. So yeah. Amazing. Really beautiful. Thank you, Roberta and Corrine. So appreciate your thoughts. We're going to take a break. And when we come back, we're going to hear the stories of Lorraine and Sharon and how faith informs their uh, life decisions and where God is taking them. We're also going to have and hear a devotional from Anne Miranda, which I can't wait to hear uh, for the people of Manitoba. So stay with us. Check out the See Here Love podcast and get the backstory. Good job. Get the inside scoop on real issues and real answers on common challenges we all face in relationships and in life. Find See Here Love on Apple Podcasts. Hi, I'm Melinda, host and executive producer of See Here Love, and I hope you are enjoying our conversation today. Well, you may not realize that See Here Love is made possible by the support of viewers and listeners like you. So would you please consider becoming a monthly donor? Any gift goes a long way in helping us build a community of women and men who talk about real issues and struggles as we navigate our faith together. Well, please go to seeherelove.com now and click on the big purple donate button. Thanks so much. Start your week off with me in your inbox. Sign up for our weekly newsletter today for exclusive content of See Here Love. Blogs, behind the scenes footage and access to giveaways you'll love. Sign up today and let's start our week together. All right, well, we're back uh, with uh, Roberta and Kareen, Sharon and Lorraine, sharing stories about how Jesus informs our choices and decisions and how we love our neighbor well. And I know that you have um, a great question for Lorraine. Hi, Lorraine. I'm excited to be on the show with you. So uh, fun fact, I get to work with Lorraine's son. We are both on staff together and he is, I always say, he's my brother from another mother. Well, here's his mother. This is so fun. And so um, on a serious note, I know that you've been widowed um, and you understand deep loss. Um, I, I can relate so much um, to parts of your story. And I wanted to ask you that because how how have you been able to connect to a deeper level with your neighbor who's journeyed through mourning and loss? Can you speak on that for a little bit for us? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I was actually widowed six years ago today. And um, through that journey, I actually ended up at a church here in the city. I was uh, for a program called Grief Share. And I realized very quickly in my journey through widowhood that I needed to be intentional to um, walk through how it felt to be a widow, to walk through all the waves of grief, um, the ups and downs, because those waves just wipe you out. And sometimes they just ripple underneath your feet. So I got connected with a wonderful uh, program called Grief Share with a couple who had lost their daughter to a drunk driver 13 years prior to me meeting them. And in that program, it helped me to um, take my focus off me and put my focus on Christ. And to realize that when my focus was on Christ, that's where my healing was going to come and that's where my joy was going to come. So I attended the 13 week program, my daughter and I attended it. And it just for me was so helpful to walk through it that I ended up bringing it back to my home church and said, we need to do this. So I did it a couple of times after, um, after the I did it myself as a participant, and then I got married again. And after I got married, I decided I wasn't going to spend time in grief. That wasn't where I needed to be. But I saw a lot of hurting people around me that really needed that same program that I had been a participant with. Um, so I said to my pastors, can I bring Grief Share to our church? And since I've brought it to our church, we have people from within our church, outside our church, Christians, non-Christians, who have come to this program. We've, I've had over 40 people now walk through it with me. And my, my new husband does it with me. He wow. facilitates it, which is really cool because I need a man to be there. And he tells me he's my sidekick and he introduces himself that way. And he sets up the tables and does all the hospitality piece. Um, but he's able to see my rawness in, doing, in sharing about grief share and sharing about what Christ can do in your life when you focus on him and allow Christ to heal your heart 
and allow other people to walk with you through such a difficult time. Mm -hmm. So that's how I'm getting to love mm -hmm. on people and care for people and yeah, just caring for the widows and for the widowed and for people who've lost children, fought parents, people who are orphans. There's just, there's so much need. Wow. Oh. Uh, now, as an educator, let's flip this um, mm -hmm. to what you do, you know, as a school principal, you introduce yourself as like that. And so you are an educator. How important is it to have this posture of learning from your neighbor? Posture of learning from my neighbor. Okay. I, I, I threw this one up to you. This is a spontaneous question, Lauren. Yeah. Can I bring it to the COVID situation? Sure. Yeah. I don't know if you've had educators speak on COVID right now, but COVID, I've had to learn together with my school division and with my school and my teachers. And my deepest prayer through the whole thing was to have patience and peace in the midst of chaos. Because as a school leader, things change so quickly. And so, well, it did for all of us during the whole COVID time. And I had to walk closely with my school staff. And I had to be the one that was calm and peaceful in that midst of chaos and to keep them at an even level as well so that we could then serve our, our students and our parents well. Because all of a sudden, we went from having 25 children in front of us in a classroom to having 25 children online through Seesaw or Microsoft Teams or whatever. And then all of a sudden our um, government said, okay, now let's bring our children back into the school. And since June 1st, we've had that joy of having children in our school and having to walk with them again and love on them because they're a little bit scared to come back. They don't know what to expect when they walk back in their classroom and it doesn't look like when they left. So um, I think being the neighbors that relational piece as a school principal, in being able to understand your community well, both your students, your parents, and your teachers and your staff, and to love on them well in whatever's going on, mm -hmm. to love well. Um, I'm in a public school now, I used to work in a large um, independent Christian school, and there, and I wondered when I moved to the public school system, what would that look like? But I can still love God and love others even though I'm in a, in a public school system now. And that's where I'm needed today. Yeah. That's where I'm grateful to be. You know, Lorraine, I do appreciate you did mention that it's actually today is the anniversary of, of the passing of your, of your first husband. Mm -hmm. And yeah. we so appreciate um, and affirm your courage for being on the show with us, uh, for being open. I think to tie in what you're saying, I think your experience of loss can connect with so many people. Many people have lost, have had loss, and are losing people, whether it's through a pandemic, whether it's through uh, things that are done to them. Um, it, there's just a lot of that. And so I'm, I'm so thankful that you are in spaces where you can connect with your neighbor and, and know deeply what that is like. Uh, just one last thing. What would you say for people that are really right now listening and watching that are sitting in overwhelming loss and just cannot find their way out. Spend time in that loss. Don't be scared of it. Allow people to help you and look, and because that's hard to do. It's hard to let others help you. And look beyond yourself. Realize that there's a hurting world out there that needs you too. And find a way, um, find a way to give back. Find a way to give to somebody else. Uh, reach out to a neighbor, bring by cookies, do something like that. But uh, don't be scared. Don't we can our grief for a long time and we can have a choice. I could have been the grieving widow or I could have joy choose to find joy again. Mm -hmm. And I chose to find joy again. Look for that joy. Find, be grateful for each moment. Um, find joy in the small things. They're there. And just be grateful that we've got a God that's bigger than all of this, even is bigger than grief. And he's going to walk with you if you allow him to do that. Well said. Beautiful. Thank you. And thank you for your presence with us today, even though it's a, a difficult day. We so appreciate you. Thank you, Lorraine. Thank you. Sharon, I know that you are also an educator and you're also a therapist. And we need some help. Well, I don't mean it that way, but we need some of your therapy. Um, and I think in relation to our neighbor, uh, as, 
as you, you know, we're, we're sort of navigating through a really tough year. 2020 has not been an easy year for many of us. A, a pandemic, uh, unrest, uh, political unrest, um, you know, that this heightened awareness of racism and systemic racism. And we need Jesus more than ever, Sharon, just to heal deep wounds and bring restoration and reconciliation, healing and hope. I know it's a big question. I know it's a lot. But what would you say about how a relationship with Jesus, following him, leaning into his character, can help us in this kind of time when, when ever, you know, never before, for, for many people and even younger people, they've never experienced this before. What would you say? What, what would be some of your advice? Well, as a Christ follower, I come back to Philippians 4.13, where it says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And, you know, I really believe that we, through this as a big part of it, is forgiveness. I believe it includes forgiveness. And when we forgive, it brings hope. And because of hope, we can have a result, which is change. Mm. And I really believe that. And, you know, as in my, in my practice, I find when we are vulnerable, I mean, we've seen that today through this program, when we're vulnerable, when we're open, people connect with us. When we have empathy for other people and see that they, they also, they have a perspective and we, we have empathy for them and we, we, we try to walk in their, in their shoes, I want to say, we'll never do that, but we can try to connect as best as we possibly can and listen to their story. And you know, in my practice, I have clients who are and those that are not Christ followers. And I can say that as a Christ follower, we, we have so much hope for, for reconciliation and for restoration. And I think no matter what anybody is going through, we need to know that even when we feel lonely, we're not alone. He is he is there with us in the mess, in the, in the muck, and he is there to help to comfort us. And I just want to bring you back to that Philippians 4.13. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Mm. Thank you, Sharon. I think, and with that, I think it's just when we know that, that God will give us all that we need, I think that helps us then in very hard conversations in things that are put in front of us. We can, we can do it with his strength and help. I mean, it's going to take work on our part. We can't just sit back and go, Hey God, you do it. And I'm not going to do anything. There is an action, a movement, a posture of, of learning, educating and moving right towards reconciliation and change. So there is that on us. And I'm thankful that his spirit is in us to help us and to guide us and to, and to give us that, that power and ability to do that. In that, though, Sharon, many people are very weary and tired, and I know your verse sits on that too, but exhausted. Um, I've never heard from women, like literally, like physically, emotionally, and spiritually, we are like tapped out. Uh, what would you say to that? Because there's such a struggle to say we need to keep going, and there's lots to do, and, and, and we've got to do, 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 but there's just this overwhelming exhaustion from just so much of what has happened in the world today. What would your encouragement be to us? Well, I actually, I was thinking about joy and, you know, as a, as a Christ follower, I look at joy as something, um, it's not necessarily an emotion, but rather it's an attitude that comes from within. And I want to just encourage people to, in that time of weariness, if that's what you're feeling right now, Daily carve out time with God. I mean, it sounds, it maybe sounds like something that's so simple, but I'll tell you what my experience is, is my perspective often changes when I'm in the presence of God. And just um, surrounding ourselves with people who encourage us. And, you know, I often think, um, I often think my five closest friends often mirror who I am. And so I just, you know, surround yourselves with people that will build you up and that will listen to you in your, in whatever you're going through and formulate a life filled with gratitude. And when you think a, thit a critical thought about yourself, tell yourself, I am enough. I am enough. 
And so be encouraged and, and have a heart of gratitude, even when it's hard to do that. Words are powerful. And if you can say, Lord, I thank you for this, or I thank you for that, even sometimes when you don't feel like it. Yeah. But it's interesting how it can just change our perspective. Yeah, that's good. Corrine, Roberta, Lorraine, you're hearing Sharon say this, and I'm seeing a lot of nods. Like, what are any just quick thoughts and response about gratitude and joy and that you can do all things through God's strength? What are, what are your thoughts as you hear her? Love to hear them. Um, for, for me, one of the ways that I, I choose to care for my mental health is through worship. It's through worship. It's through, I think there's such a power in worship. In, even when we can pray, even when we can speak, just to stand in that mind, that state of mind and be like, let our heart worship. That's how I, I usually say. I'm just letting my heart speak today. I, I have no word. I'm so tired. I'm so anxious. I'm so weary. But Lord, you already know. So I'm just standing in your presence and worshiping you, worshiping you for who you are. And it makes a, a real difference. And Sharon said it so beautifully that God is the one who restores and he's just, just, just standing and be vulnerable with God and tell him that I can't, I cannot do this by myself. I need you. And just, there's a complete change. So that's something that I can definitely relate to. We think we're singing and we're writing a song. I can just pour my, my heart out and write a song and just stay yeah. grateful and worship. Yeah. So worship. I love that. Roberta, what about for you, your thoughts? I think for me, it's, like saying, and when she was saying, I really believe like Joshua 1, 9, like God is with you. Like we don't have to beg God to be with us. Like I don't have to like, God be here. Like he's already here. He promises to always be there. And that sounds like such a like obvious truth, but I forget often. I'm like begging God to like deposit something. And he's like, the Holy Spirit's with you. Like you're good. You're, I'm here. So I think when we remember like, no, we're truly not alone. And we don't have to beg God to show up. And just like having that posture, it, it really does. It gives you gratefulness. It gives you joy. It gives you peace. I think it's a remedy for a lot of things. Roberta, I love that reminder. It's not like we have to ask God to come. He's already with us. In the midst of what we're feeling, even when we're low, what's crazy and amazing is he is with us in that time. Mm -hmm. As he's with us when we're feeling amazing and joyful and everything's great. Mm -hmm. That is such a good reminder and, and, and gives us the confidence that he is with us. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Lorraine, what about you? I actually want to go back to Psalm 23, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. And death can be one of the hardest things. But when I think back to my grief journey, and I think about even today, um, focusing on Christ, making Christ the center of your life, whether that be through worship, like Kareem said, that worship is a huge part of my life as well, both in music and in other ways. Um, finding the joy in each moment realizing that God created this beautiful, beautiful world. And there are so many beautiful things that we need to be looking for and seeing in God's creation. Being grateful. I agree with that as well, that I have that every day. How do we end our day? Even with my staff through this whole COVID time, we connected at the end of every day saying, what's one thing you're grateful for and what's one thing you accomplished today? because we have to remember we've got so many things to be grateful for. My last thing would be, remember that God is good and he is good all the time in the hard times and in the beautiful times. And don't let go of that. Um, hold close to God. He's there, he hasn't stepped away and he will walk you through whatever it is that you need. Beautiful. Well, Sharon, Corrine, Roberta and Lorraine, beautiful, beautiful thoughts. Thank you. And I know that we've got at the end, some of your final takeaways, but I want to go now to Anne, who's going to share a devotional with us and encourage us and encourage the women and men of Manitoba. I'm excited to hear what you have to share today, Anne. Yeah, I mean, this has been quite an amazing show. Um, you know, as we were doing our homework around Manitoba, uh, I realized it's just like the heart of Canada. It's like the center and the center that uh, uh, it's just 
it's founded on human rights, on being kind, on being peaceful, and out of that kind of the ripple effect out into the nation. Uh, it's a really special place that we have discovered. And at least I feel like I've discovered. I haven't even been there yet, and I'm really looking forward uh, to that one day. But I realized that to know our history gives us perspective on our roots. It affirms our you know true north identity. And today in the spirit of celebrating Canada Day, I actually went and did a little bit more homework on uh, Canada itself and the heritage as a nation under God. And most of what I want to talk about today are findings from the Ezra Institute. And basically, it's interesting to study that on all of our parliamentary buildings, God's word is carved on the walls. And when I started to really understand and research even more, what, why? Why was that? Why is that part of Canada's history? They serve as a rebuke as well as an encouragement for all Canadians that God continues to call his people to a covenant of faithfulness. And so it's been interesting for me to discover that there's this strong interwoven presence of Christianity all throughout uh, uh, Canadian history, up until quite recently, actually. Um, and that Canada was always regarded by the founding fathers as a Christian nation. It was devoted to teaching the word of God. And so I actually want to go through a couple of the biblical verses that are inscribed on the Peace Tower and parliamentary buildings that are in you know, Ottawa um, that remind us of our Christian heritage. So one of them is Psalm 72, verse 8. It's also featured on Canada's coat of arms. And the passage reads, may he have dominion from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. It's inscribed in Latin, amare usquad mare. And it's the psalm that actually inspired the name of Canada to be called the dominion of Canada. And it actually refers to the kingdom of the Messiah reigning forever on earth as it is in heaven. Like it gives me just goosebumps. I was like, what? This is amazing, Lord. You spoke these prophetic words over this nation so many years, 153 years ago, where this is the sovereign act of God saying, Lord, you know, establish this kingdom here on this country that wouldn't be marked, get this, wouldn't be marked by a kingdom of a particular ethnicity or a particular language, but rather with, by a multicultural diversity. That was the vision. That was the vision at the very beginning. Actually, so much so that the verse Proverbs 29 verse 18 that reads, where there is no vision, the people perish, but the one that keeps the law happy is he or blessed is he. The, the, our you know, forefathers, those explorers that came long ago that founded this nation, wanted this nation to be different wanted this nation to actually reflect the the vision the dedication the devotion towards the instruction of god's truth and his word and so i was extremely encouraged when i found out that ephesians chapter 6 verse 13 was also written on these walls where it's like take up the armor of god uh where Again, there is this reminder that without this armor of God, this communicating God's truth, this call to defend God's creation from all evil, that would be our, our legacy in Canada. That was what the intended legacy is, to maintain God's word and reject all evil. And so as we're celebrating Canada Day, it's just so incredible to actually uh, pause and think that this nation was founded on these truths and that this is a time that seems to be a restoration of that, a renewal where the church is actually able to, uh, you know, just rise up and go, we exist, we are here. And that our voice is echoing the voice of Christ. And so my prayer is, Lord, let your kingdom come, let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Let those words that were inscribed on the walls of our government buildings, you know, come to life. And may we stand on the truth of the gospel. Amen. And so, Karine, I actually would love, Karine, to pray in French 
um, to honor that part of our history as well. That's part of our heritage. And so if you would pray for us, Kareen, pray for our nation. Um, we are just going to follow along in agreement, whether we understand French or not, and say amen when you say amen. Okay. Okay. So let's pray. Seigneur, je te bénis et je te rends toute la gloire pour ce merveilleux pays, le Canada, pour cette terre d'opportunité, pour cette terre où chaque peuple, chaque culture, chaque identité est célébrée à sa juste valeur. Seigneur, je te bénis pour le fait que ton Église, ici dans ce pays, prend en fait sa place, grandit et continue encore d'élever ton nom au-dessus de, de tous ces peuples. Seigneur, c'est la journée du Canada, c'est la fête du Canada et nous te remercions pour la liberté que nous avons de te servir, la liberté que nous avons de t'adorer, la liberté que nous avons de parler de toi, la liberté que nous avons d'avoir des conversations et de lever ton nom et de montrer cet amour que tu nous as donné, montrer cet amour envers notre prochain et montrer qui tu es, la lumière du monde. Seigneur, je te bénis encore pour toutes ces vies, pour toutes ces opportunités. Permets que nous soyons la lumière du monde. Permets que nous soyons le sel de la terre et que nous puissions éradier de ton amour dans toutes les vies. Merci encore pour ta présence. Merci pour ta grâce. Et que tu continues encore de bénir ce pays. Que tu continues encore de faire régner ta justice. Que tu continues de faire régner ta paix dans les cœurs et sur toute la nation canadienne. Au nom de Jésus, j'ai prié. Amen. Amen. Oh, thank you. Beautiful. Thank you. Wow. Thank you, Anne, too, for those beautiful words. I want to finish off with your thoughts, your encouragement and takeaway to women and men in Manitoba, but also on this Canada Day, Sharon, Lorraine, Roberta, and Karine, your, your, your final takeaway that you want to encourage a young woman who is hurting or lost feeling lost and grief, feeling overwhelmed and tired, hurt. What would you say? What would be your encouragement uh, to her today? Roberta, let's start with you. What is your takeaway? I think for me, I'd want, I feel like in this season of life, it can feel so overwhelming with everything happening, but you have everything you need to keep moving forward. Like you're not in lack, you're not in want. God has given you everything. I feel so overwhelmed being a first time mom and church planter, but God continues to remind me like I have everything I need in this season. And so I think my encouragement to anyone right now who's hurting or, or frustrated to know like God's given you all the tools you need right now. And even if it's just little baby steps, like oh, that's amazing. Don't, don't like despise the small steps and keep moving forward. Beautiful, wonderful. Sharon, your takeaway? You're unique, you're special, and you're created by God. And you know, ultimately, live your life so that when you meet your Savior, he can say to you, well done. That's good. Thank you, Sharon. Lorraine, your thoughts and takeaway? Yeah, I want to end it with um, Philippians 4, verses 4 to 7. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you. And Corrine, your final thoughts and takeaway? Yes, um, there was just that verse um, in Matthew 8, uh, where there was that sick man who come to Jesus and just say, just say one word. And Jesus' answers was so real. He just said, I am willing. And then he said, be healed. So I just want to say to anybody who's going through a hard time that Jesus is willing and he is already restoring you. And you can just rest in those promises. When you feel tired, just declare the presence. Just say, I am healed. It's not that I'm begging. I am healed. I have the strength. I can do all things through Christ. And just let those promises sink deep. And just renew our mind, renew our strength every day. Yeah, beautiful. What an emotional show. Thank you, all of you. Sharon, Roberta, Kareen, Lorraine, and just for your thoughts. It's really beautiful and special as we share 
as women sort of meeting each other for the first time and some who have been friends for a while, how this beautiful sisterhood and connection comes because of Jesus and, and his love for us and his promises for us. I want to end with this thought as my close, as a blessing to all of you. Do you know that the motto for Manitoba, which you would know, is Friendly Manitoba? And what I love is I love learning about your national flowers and trees and your actual national tree in Manitoba is the white spruce, which many know is your Christmas tree. But as you study a little bit deeper, the Christmas tree, the white spruce, is capable of surviving in virtually every climate and environmental region in Manitoba. Your national tree, the white spruce, can live in extremely cold and harsh temperatures and long sun-filled days, and it can survive in any range of soil and moisture. And when I think about those two things, friendly Manitoba and the strong white spruce that represents your province and essentially you as people, these words come up, friendly, welcoming, open, inclusive, hearty, strong, resilient, flexible, able to withstand whatever comes your way. I wanna be a Manitoban. <laughs> I think all of Can Canada would love to be women and men that are Manitobans. Because when you hear about that you can withstand anything that comes your way, harsh weather and climate, you still will stand and you can be planted anywhere and grow and give shade and food and shelter to those in need. You are beautiful and we are so thankful for the people of Manitoba and what you bring to this great country of Canada. So thank you so much, all of you, for your lives and your influence, how you love your neighbor in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Anne, so much for your devotional, for your care and love for this country and for the work that you do, thank you. And to you, our viewers and listeners, thank you for traveling across Canada with us on this adventure with Anne and myself as we learn and listen to the beautiful and wonderful stories of women across Canada. Incredible stories of faith and courage and authenticity and pain and loss, but yet knowing that Jesus is with them, faithful, always faithful with them. And I know, Anne, we have come to appreciate this beautiful country that God has placed us in today. And so for more information about all of our guests here, about Anne, uh, resources and past shows and blogs, go to seeherelove.com. As we end this show, we end it with Kareen, Kareen's song, Says the Lord, which I know you will be encouraged by. And always know that you are seen you are heard, and you are deeply loved by God. Happy Canada Day. God bless. Bye-bye.